guys, Tina with my homesteading project and here is a long promised video. I promised I would make this video quite some time ago and I'm finally getting to it. So it's a video for you ladies out there. These are my fabric uh, menstrual pads. So this one here is the pattern that I've been using for the last six or seven years and it's the one that you saw in the family cloth video. And then this one is a new type that I've kind of been making. Um, this one here doesn't require a pattern at all, and it's just made with my rotary cutter and then my serger. So that goes together just a little bit quicker um, and without the pattern, without having to trace and cut out. But anyway, I'll go ahead and show you how I make both of those today. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, fabric choices and what I use. I always use flannel for my pads. It's cotton, it's breathable, it's fairly inexpensive. So that's what I make my pads out of. Now I have two types of fabric here. Now this fabric, I don't have very much of left, but it is a woven flannel. So it, the pattern goes all the way through. It holds up really well after multiple washes it'll it'll still look really good and uh, holds up over time. I've had pads that I've had for six or seven years that I'm still using. They're still in good shape and they faded a little bit, but, but these tend to wash up and look nicer for longer. But this is a little bit more expensive than the printed flannel. Now the printed flannel is super cute. You can get it in super cute patterns for really cheap. Usually I buy it 50% off and pay no more than $2 a yard, usually less than $2 a yard. But the thing about the printed is the pattern doesn't go all the way through. So over time, this will fade. They will still be functional, but it won't be quite as bright and pretty, but they still look pretty. So, and then I've got the, the solid on the bottom, and usually I get that for $1.50 or less a yard when I get it on sale. So I like to coordinate the two fabrics. I just think they look prettier. Then for my filler, depending on how absorbent you need your pads to be, um, you can do multiple layers of various fabrics. The different things that I've used are cotton, 100% cotton batting, and this is actually the edge that I cut off of a quilt when I was making a quilt. So save all those scraps because they can be useful but 100% uh, cotton uh, batting, quilt batting. I also use uh, terry cloth. Make sure that you get the 100% cotton terry cloth though. Do not buy the polyester blend because it is not as absorbent. So, and then I also use just plain white flannel because this is super cheap when it's on sale and I buy it in a great big bolt. Um, just plain old white cotton flannel. doesn't have to be patterned because it's going inside. No one's going to see it. So those are my fillers. And then when I worked outside the home, I definitely used this. This is called pull. And this is, uh, you find this in the section where, <coughs> excuse me, you find this in the baby section uh, because they use this to line homemade baby diapers with the snaps on the side, the real cute ones, the washable diapers. Um, this is to prevent leakage. So I do put a layer of this on the bottom of my menstrual pads when I was working outside the home and I wanted to make sure I was not going to have any leakage. I don't use it so much now since I'm home most of the time, but I do have some pads that have this in it, which makes it really nice to prevent any leakage. But this fabric is kind of expensive, so I definitely recommend you wait till it's on sale or use a coupon at your fabric store to buy it because the pull, P-U-L, the pull is kind of on the pricey side. So if you don't need it, you don't need to use it. So those are the fabrics that I use, and now we'll go to cutting out and working on our first pad. To make your pattern super easy, what I did was just take your favorite menstrual pad that you purchase and stick it down to a piece of paper. Then I traced around it. Now this line here is where I traced around the pad because that's the actual size of the pad. I did not include the wings that were on the pad, but I just traced the pad itself. Then what I did was I added a seam allowance all the way around the outside. 
So this looks really big, but this is the seam allowance line right here. Then I went ahead and drew inside where I wanted my absorbent layer to be. My, my layer that, my core that will be the most absorbent and made a pattern out of that. Now you can just stick with the paper pattern and go ahead and do that, but I knew that I was going to be making multiple, multiple pads. So what I did was I went ahead and out of the plastic template paper that you use for stencils to make a stencil for your wall, I went ahead and used that to make patterns for my pads. And I just put the put it over there and drew out my pattern. And I went ahead and incorporated the wings. So this is the top and the bottom. I cut out of those. And then I went ahead and made another pattern. This is my filler and my pole layer. They don't need the wings on it. It just makes, makes it super bulky if you do that with your wings. <clears throat> And then I did a pattern for my core that goes in the middle. So that these were very reusable. And uh, But as I said, you can always stick with a paper template if that's what you've got. So that's how I made my pattern. We are going to make our menstrual pads out of this cute little bumblebee and flower material today. So... I showed you the pattern. So, for your top and your bottom, I cut one of the pretty fabric for the top. I cut a solid for the bottom. And then, for this one here, I'm going to make this like I, I made most of my original ones. I went ahead and cut out one, one of these, and this has the seam allowance and everything, but I cut out one just plain white flannel piece, and then I have two pieces of the 100% cotton batting. I'm going to use that for my insert today. So that's the absorbent layer. And then, just to show you how to do it, I went ahead and cut out a piece of the pole, and that's going to be our our barrier to prevent leakage. Okay, and that goes on the bottom. So, to assemble this first pad, the first thing that I'm going to do is take my white flannel core and my two inserts and I'm going to go ahead and zigzag all the way around this. And that is mainly to keep it in place while I'm sewing the other layers together. And also it helps to make this thinner on the edge so that you don't have a big, a big bump here. It makes it a little bit smoother and more comfortable. So I'm going to go ahead and zigzag around the edge on my sewing machine and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've zigzagged around the edge, if you can see that, which makes it nice and smooth along the edge. You don't have that big step up anymore because that sucked that right down. So okay, I apologize. My camera quit on me there for a minute. So, what I did that you missed is I took that core layer and what I did was I put it together with my top and I went ahead and if you can see this I just did a little uh, stitch down the center to make a channel to channel into the center into my core okay so I find that helps with leakage so after you get those together, and also the reason for that is so that it stays together, it's easier to sew around the edges. So now what I'm going to do is I've got my bottom layer, which is my blue, with the wings, and then I've got my pull, my uh, vapor barrier. And so what I'm going to, one side is kind of fabric-y, 
and the other side is kind of um, slick and the waterproof side. So I put the waterproof side up, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but that's just how I do it. And then I put my core and my top layer on top. And then I kind of loosely pin around the edges. And to hold it together, because these are quite a few layers and the pole is very slick and it wants to slide around. Flannel sticks together pretty good, but that pull in between will make it want to slide. So we're just going to line this up and pin it together. Now you can hand stitch this at this point or you can use your machine. I tried to do this pattern with a serger and those inside corners are just too tricky for me. So I did modify this initial pattern to be done on the serger around the edges for the finished edge and I can show you that modification that I did um, to the pattern after we get this done. Okay, so we're all pretty much pinned up. So now I'm just going to sew around the outside edge and I'm actually going to sew in about three quarters of an inch and I'll show you why when we get to that part. And this is start. Okay, so I've gone around this one time and that holds that all together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce this seam. So now I'm going to sew about a quarter of an inch away from that seam. I'm going to put my presser foot along the edge and I'm going to sew again a quarter of an inch away from that seam. And again, you can go ahead and do this by hand if you like, or you can do it um, here with the machine. Okay, so now I've sewn around the edge twice and I have a seam just like that. Now you can go ahead and cut right next to this seam but do not cut through it. So what we're going to do is trim off let me this a little bit. We're going to trim off the excess around the edge. And we're going to cut right up next to about a sixteenth of an inch away from that stitching. That's why I did the double stitching because should this ever for some reason pop a stitch you have a second a second seam in there, just like you do in a shirt or, or anything else. So you're going to cut all the way around that and then just leave it. Or what you can do is, I have another one to show you, or you can do a zigzag stitch all the way around as well, depending on how you want it to be finished. And just like here, I cut about a sixteenth of an inch away from my seam. You don't want to cut through your seam. And you can do it that way with a zigzag 
or with a straight stitch. Either way, either way works. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting this out and then I'll show you how to attach the stamp snaps. Oh, I forgot one thing. I didn't sew through here. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. But when you sew your first line across, you can sew all the way through so that when you bend it like this, you have your seam right here. See that? You have your curved seam here. So I'm going to go ahead and, zip and, and sew that on there real quick. And then we'll come back to do the snaps. So our pad is all sewn together. We've got our decorative stitch on the top. We've got our stitches down here for the edge of our pad. The back is solid. And there's the front. Super cute. Now we're just going to put our snaps on. Now you can use any kind of snaps you want. Um, you can use the regular metal snaps like that and that's what I initially used when I first started. It's my little wood spool and my little thing to hammer my snaps on and my hammer. But what I've started using now are the cute little um, plastic snaps. So if I can open my case here. Okay. So for bumblebees we will use blue snaps, I think. So what you'll need from the plastic snaps, and these are size 20 plastic snaps in case you're wondering. So you need two of the little snap covers and one of those and one of these. And I'll show you how this works. Super easy. Now I usually just eyeball it. You can measure, but the whole point of these are you want to make sure that they're going to meet on the back. So right about there and right about there and they'll snap together. So I'm going to take my little punch tool and kind of look eyeball about the middle and I'm going to punch a hole to start my snap and then I'm going to push my little flat part through there and then I'm going to take one of my other little snap pieces put it on there now if you do use the plastic snaps you do have to buy the little fancy tool so but these are way easier one little push and that snaps on there and it's plastic and it lasts forever. They're the same kind of snaps that uh, you use on baby diapers. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we're going to line up. And so we want this to be right about there. As you can see, I don't do a lot of measuring. <laughs> now, make sure that you put your snap on the right way. On this one, I want the flat to go on the opposite side. See, flat on this side, flat on that side. And then I'll put the other half of my snap on there. Press, and that's on there. And there's my first pad. This is my first pad design that I've used for years and years and years. Um, and the nice thing I also like about this is that you can fold it up. And snap it. Uh, watch me now. I can't snap it. There we go. You can fold it up. 
and no one knows what that is. If you have to go to the restroom or whatever, throw it in your purse, it's totally concealed. No one even knows what that is. So that's the first pad design. Now real quickly I just want to show you how I made this pad with my rotary cutter and my serger. It's a little bit quicker process but I'm just going to kind of walk you through the steps because it's basically the same as the other one only the cutting out procedure is a little bit quicker because you don't use a pattern. So what I did was I cut out three inch wide strips out of my fabric just like you would if you were making a quilt. I used my rotary ruler and my cutter and I just cut a whole bunch of really long three inch strips. I cut out my top fabric, I cut out a strip for the bottom fabric, and I also cut out a couple strips of my plain white flannel. Okay. Then after I cut the three inch long strips, I went ahead and cut out nine inch long pieces and then I also cut out some four inch long pieces out of the top fabric and the bottom fabric. Okay, so there's four pieces of these. Two tops, two bottoms, one top, one bottom and then in this particular one that I'm doing, I'm doing two layers of plain white flannel for my core. These are just going to be a light pad or you can use these for panty liners or whatnot. Now the next thing you're going to do is take this apart. You've got your bottom layer and then whatever your bottom core is or if you use pull, you can the pull you have the pull be the next layer or you can use another core piece. For me it's a core piece. Those two are going to stay together. Anything that's left over, whether it's two layers, three layers, whatever your core is, whether it's flannel, whether it's terry cloth, whatever. The, the top and whatever other pieces go together like this. You're going to do your cute little channel stitch down the middle. Okay? That holds all these together. And then you're going to slap this back together, just like that. Okay? Now, from your little wing pieces, these are your wings, four by three inch pieces. You're going to go ahead and surge around three sides. Okay? Just one continuous surge around three sides. Okay? And you're going to do that to both of these pieces. Then you take these top sides together, put it in the middle, and you can measure of course. And then you're going to go ahead and surge all the way around and then when you get to this side you'll put this piece which of course would be serge and you would sew that all the way around so then it looks like this okay you've got your serging all the way around and that's what sews these wings onto the sides okay so that is much quicker then you put the snaps on and you're good to go so there's that one now I wanted to show you my adaptation of my first pad. So this first pad that we did, if you want to do this pad on a serger, what you need to do is instead of cutting out this for your top and bottom, you're going to cut out this for your top and bottom and your pole or your filler, whatever you want this size. But your top and bottom will be this size and then you will cut out separate wings for the side and so I just use my template and I cut out a wing with a seam allowance you're gonna do it the same way we just did the rectangle one only you're gonna do it with your rounded wings and I kinda like that pattern better but um, you are doing tracing and cutting and it does take a little bit longer now the only other thing that I wanted to show you was the mama pad, which is really big. Okay, so this is the mama pad. This is your regular menstrual pad. So yes, it's much larger, okay? It's a little bit larger in the front, much larger in the back, in the seat area, okay? These are really great if you have heavy flow at night when you're sleeping or if you've just given birth and 
it's, you know, right after you give birth, you do have quite a bit of discharge. So these are really great for that as well. I don't have any cloth ones here on hand. But here's your pattern with your wings. And then the core is right there in the middle. And then I go ahead and cut the pull, which of course you need that, wa that waterproof barrier for these is the same size as the pad, okay? And then your core, what in the other one was just the rectangle, I made this size, okay? So that is your mama pads. You make them exactly the same way that we made the first one. So that about does it. Um, I know that it's a lot of steps and that I probably put a lot more effort into these than I know some people do. But honestly, I am still using the first ones that I made six, seven years ago are still holding up and still in really good shape. And I absolutely love them. If you make things well, they will last for a long time. So hopefully that helps you. I'm sorry it took so long to get this video up. But I hope you guys like those. And uh, you guys, if you have any questions or anything, just go ahead and leave them in the comments below if I missed anything. Or I'm sure I couldn't have possibly, but if I missed anything. And you guys have a great afternoon. And remember, God is good. We'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.